Let's rotate the block and we're going to start working on the pistons. All right, so we have the block flipped and what we want to do now is go ahead and measure each of the bores of the six cylinders. We know roughly where they're at, but I want a little bit more accurate of a number. And the way we're going to go ahead and do that is using a dial bore gauge like this one. And there are assortments of different sizes of lengths and we know roughly it's a little over three inches. So we're going to actually pull the 3.2 but we're also going to use the 0 0.005. We're going to put that on this piece and the 0 0.02. And we tighten this on. And what we want to do is make sure that the dial is at zero. And now that we have those adapters on, so roughly we should be at 3.27 inches. And we're going to stick that in each of the bores and we're going to roll it back and forth. And we're going to note where the highest point of the dial goes. Now when we're rocking this back and forth in the bore, you can see that right on the marker is the maximum point. And you're going to want to do that at three different angles to the bore. And make sure that that marker that you've set is the maximum spot. So now that we have our marker set, Let's go ahead and take this to the bench and see how the diameter of the bore is. If we look at our dial now, once again, each of these increments is 0 0.005 of an inch and it's marked on your dial. We can count over 15 marks. So if we say that the size of with our adapters was 3.27 inches plus those 15 marks, 0 0.0005, which that equates to 0 0.0075 of an inch. That gives us a total of 3.2775 of an inch of diameter. Now we need to do that to every single cylinder just to make sure they are the same. Now the reason why we are measuring our bore is because we need to set the gap to our piston rings and the manufacturer states that for a street engine normally aspirated what we want to shoot for is point 004 of an inch for every inch of diameter and that will give us point 0.013 of an inch of gap that we need to check for. So with checking gap, what we're gonna do is take all of our rings and we'll just start with the one cylinder to show. We are going to carefully insert it. And then in this case, I'm going to use a piston to make sure that the depth, I'm just gonna to go to the first ring, make sure that is square in the bore. They do make tools for this very thing. That will make it a lot easier. And then you take a gap tool and the minimum is 0 0.013 that we need to set this gap at. And what I want to do is put it right in between the ring and just feel a slight tug. And we're just a little bit above 0 0.013. But let's say this didn't fit. Let's say that we needed to gap this. So in the event that you needed to gap one of your pistons, you would need something at least like this, which is a sanding disc on a crank. And you would put in your ring and line it up so that you could sand and keep a nice edge and only sand on one side and that when you have your gap, you'll have to go back and forth with the block to check your gap. But once you've achieved that gap within your requirements, you then want to also take your file. It's like a jeweler's file and then sand 
the corners and your burrs to make sure they're nice and smooth so you don't do any damage to your bores. So once you're happy with the gaps of all of the rings, then you'll wanna go ahead and assemble them on the pistons. Let's take a look at the pistons and basically what we've had the machine shop do is take the new pistons and attach them to the connecting rods. The other thing that they did was they took the ends and shaved them, reattached, and then rebored the large end of the connecting rod to factory spec. So this is back to the original size for installation. So we are good with our bearings that we bought. So what we have the rods ready for are our new ARP studs and nuts. And what we're first going to do is go ahead and attach our rings. Now, in this case, we have essentially four sets of rings. We have our top and our second compression rings. We have our expander ring and our oil rings. And there's two for each expander for each piston. So there's 12 in here, six, six, and six. Another item to notice when we're looking at our connecting rods is that they are numbered. And in this case, we're looking at number one. So we have a one here and a one here. We'll wanna make sure that those are together when attached. And as well, most pistons have a marking on the top to say that this goes to the front of the engine. In our case, these pistons are marked with the letter F for front. So this will be going to the front of the engine block. Now, if we look at the parts of the piston that we're going to be attaching the rings to is we have three channels and top channel is for our top compression ring and the middle channel is for our second compression ring or middle compression ring. And the third channel is for an oil ring, an expander ring, and then a second oil ring. And basically the expander ring sits sandwiched in those rings. So you can see there. Now the second ring is referred to a Napier ring, which basically has this little lip and that's gonna be angled in this direction. So as the piston moves down, it wipes the oil and brings oil back up. There are several ways that people orient or clock the gaps of all of the rings. The way we're gonna do this is if you're looking at the piston from the front of the engine with our mark facing towards the front of the block, and this is our wrist pin, that at the 10 o'clock and the two o'clock position will be our oil rings. Our expander ring will be at the six o'clock position and the top ring will be at the four o'clock position and then followed by the second ring or middle ring will be at the eight o'clock position. So first what we wanna do is go ahead and install our rings and then we will clock them. All right, if we start with an oil ring and you can use a tool to expand the rings if you follow the line, take, being careful that your ring doesn't scratch and you pull up on the end of the ring, that will allow it to set right in. Now with the expander ring, you wanna make sure that these two butt up against each other and they, they don't overlap. And that's gonna sit on top of our bottom oil ring. Now we're gonna take our top oil ring, making sure that it sits on top of the expander ring. Then we'll take our middle ring, our second ring, and remember this is the Napier style, which has a tiny lip, and we want that lip to be at a right angle down the piston. And then on the top ring, in our case, it is just a standard ring. It can be installed either way. We're just gonna go ahead, careful not to scratch the side of the piston. And now that we have the rings, we can go ahead and clock each one. Now that we have the rings all clocked in their correct order, what we wanna go ahead and do is get our ring compression tool. And we wanna to make sure that those rings stay 
in their order. And on the ring compression tools, there's these little notches or indents. That's gonna go on the bottom of the block. So what we wanna do is tighten this up. Now, once that's tightened up, now you are going to want a couple stubs of some fuel line, and that's for the studs or the rod bolts. When you put them in and you insert the piston into the cylinder bore, then that way it protects everything such as the bore and also the crankshaft from scratching. So we're gonna put those on and then install these pistons. Now what we wanna go ahead and do is clean out our bores of any debris and we're just gonna use a little rag and some brake clean. We're gonna start with cylinder number one at the front of the engine and we make sure we have our number one piston and as well that our bearings are installed. And now we're gonna put some assembly lube on we want to put a little WD-40 in the cylinders, align our piston to make sure the F in the right direction or the front of the piston as well that our crankshaft is in the bottom dead center position. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip the block upside down and put on the ends of the connecting rod. Now that we have the block flipped, we're gonna go ahead and use some assembly lube on the bearing races of the crankshaft. And we're gonna be doing cylinders one and six at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead now and install our rod ends and we put assembly lube already and we just want to make sure that our numbers on the rod ends line up with the rod. We're going to use the ARP lubricant for the fasteners on the bolts. I'm just going to finger tight these. And now we're gonna to torque them to spec. And for what I'm doing is I'm doing a little bit on each side and working up to the torque. All right, so we've finished one and six, and so now we're gonna move on to two and five, and then three and four, and we do that because they are pairs, essentially, and so we can install and get the pistons in at the same time. So now we're gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then we'll flip the block around. All right, so we've got all the pistons in and torqued. We did add the bolt to the crankshaft, that way it made it easier to spin. And then I also added a little bit more WD-40 on the walls of the cylinders. That way, when we do move it, we don't risk dry scratching the walls. So we're looking good. All right, so we've got the pistons installed on the block. Next episode, we're gonna start working on the cylinder head so we can get that installed onto the block so we can continue this progress on this 260Z. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys like what you see, consider subscribing if you haven't. Until then, I'll see you next time.